I got asked could I do a video on how to advise people how to properly store gas masks. So that's what this is going to be, but I'm going to give you good and bad examples so you can learn why these things hopefully you should be doing them, not just do them like this. So because I have so many gas masks and so little space, the gas masks in this house are all over the place. So the valuable ones are kept in good conditions. Uh, lots of them are kept in okay conditions and some that are already broken or are pretty much price wise worthless I just keep in conditions that aren't really suitable for them but I don't really care. So this is an okay way of storing gas masks. They're all in the haversacks except this broken M62 um, and they're on a shelf that doesn't get into direct sunlight. Now you can see there's a Mark IV towards that end that doesn't have a satchel. Now if you keep them in satchels that's obviously best because that's helping keeping the mask in a sort of stuck temperature out of direct sunlight, out of anything getting onto the mask easily. So I have quite a few shelves where they're just filled with haversacks of masks in but obviously keeping them in haversacks if you have haversacks for them or carry satchels whatever is much better than not you know having them in them. For example, I said this M62 is damaged, it doesn't matter. An M62 sitting loose on the shelf is going to age faster than the mask sat in a satchel on the shelf. Just as an example. Now this is where I store some of the more valuable masks. Inside a cupboard that's dark and out of the way. The reason being that these masks can't be exposed to the air as much, you know, or fluctuating heat or light. So we have masks in there, in that box on the right is where I've got my C7 respirator and my Mickey Mouse, the British Mickey Mouse gas mask. And I've got a few other masks, not all of them are completely valuable in there, but the logic I'm using is they're in a dark cupboard out of the way. You know, insects aren't going to really get in there, maybe a spider would or something, but nothing's really going to get in there that's going to try and eat at the rubber. The temperature's not going to fluctuate, and most importantly, sunlight's not going to get in there. So that's a good safe place to keep it. If you can, I'd advise storing all masks really like that. You should always keep gas masks out of direct sunlight. So I'm going to use this mask as an example of what happens if you have masks in direct sunlight. Now I've got this MM1 on display on a mannequin. I always have it here because I think it looks cool. It's not a particularly valuable mask. But what I want to show you is what happens to the side the sun hits and the side the sun doesn't hit. So this is the side the sun sometimes hits during the day and as you can maybe see there are cracks and sort of scratches to the rubber, you know, sort of levering there. That should be quite visible on the camera now. So the rubber's obviously deteriorating because it's in somewhere that's exposed to sunlight. Now funnily enough, if I go to the other side of the mask, you'll notice that rubber looks in much better condition simply because it's the side the sun doesn't hit. Then if we go back to that side, yep, it's damaged. So that's why you try and always keep your masks out of where sunlight will hit them. And here's an example of masks that I store in my bedroom. The shelf's not quite big enough for some of the haversacks, especially the GSR haversack, which is just massive. But again, you can see they're in an inside room. If I flick the light off, you know, not much sunlight's going to actually hit them. And they're in haversacks on the shelf, so that's quite a good way of storing them. Now, this is how you shouldn't store gas masks, but I do it regardless with some of the ones that are pretty much worthless. I've got one of my GP5s hanging up because it looks cool. My Finnish V3 masks hanging up because it looks cool. As I've mentioned in other videos, I have problems with the airtight seal on that because the plate wasn't quite put in properly in the factory with the cover. And then I've got a German GM38, and you're probably saying, that's a valuable mask, why are you hanging up? Because it's damaged. You know, it's not going to work as a gas mask, but I like it on display. And I've got my Finnish M61 V2 mask. It's not a very valuable mask. I like it because it's the first ever gas mask I owned. But, you know, at the same time, it's not very valuable. I like having it on display. If it breaks, I can get another one very cheaply. And I've got plenty of actually functioning gas masks. And on the styrofoam mannequin head up there, I've got my MM of my other MM1. It's actually out of direct sunlight and with a uh, tank helmet on because I thought that looks quite cool having a mask on display with the accessory so that just sits up there sometimes I rotate the mask up there but as I said if I'm exposing masks to somewhere where there might be sunlight I try to do it with not very valuable masks so what you should learn from this video is the best way to store a mask is in its haversack out of fluctuating temperatures and sunlight preferably in a dark cupboard um, 
if you want to display masks in an okay place, have them out on a shelf where they don't hit, get much direct sunlight. You shouldn't hang them up unless you don't care about the mask because it eventually stretches the rubber or stretches the straps to a point where they won't seal properly. And also, you know, with mannequin heads, I wouldn't really recommend using them if you're wanting to store masks. I think putting it on the mannequin head has a similar problem to, um, you know, hanging the mask up where over time the mask's going to stretch to a certain shape because it's on display. But overall, it doesn't matter. One of the masks I have hanging up, which I think is mostly okay to hang up, is my Israeli 4A1. And I hang that via um, its carry strap, not the actual head harness, because on the Israeli masks, the carry strap come, is joined to the mask in a different area from the strap. So even if that strap ripped off, um, it wouldn't affect the head harness, because it's attached to a different section of the mask. But there you go. That's how I'd advise you to store masks, depending on how valuable they are and what they mean to you.